All right, Look, come on, bitches. Maybe I came to see me, but I see y'all out here. So Mr. Earl Day, born in Texas on April 17, 1940, later moved to Lubbock, Texas, where he spent most of his youth. He began to show innate talents in several areas at an early age. During his high school years, he learned to play several instruments by ear, including trombone, drums, string bass, and others. Now that is a large assortment of very, very different interests. I like it, I like it. He was a stellar athlete as well, in excelling in both swimming and basketball. And he was recently inducted into the Lubbock Independent School District Hall of Honors for his 1957 high school basketball team. After graduating from high school, he received a scholarship to Langston University and studied and performed with the Langston University Marching Band until his graduation in 1963. He earned a bachelor's in music education and later a master's in music education. Now that is dedication, sir. That is some dedication. He went on to start a band program at the Boyd School in Frederick, Oklahoma. Later moved to Lawton, Oklahoma, where he was the band director at Lawton Douglas High School. He also taught Lawton High School and Thomason Junior High. Earl married his college sweetheart. Now that is sweet. That is super sweet. We love that. He moved to Oklahoma City where he taught music at Moon Junior High. He began to perform at most of the hot spots with some of Oklahoma City's finest musicians. Although his name is not mentioned in the Deep Deuce book, he was performed, and he has performed with most of the musicians named in it. He was around. Oklahoma City is the place where he really became interested in the organ and as a result of working with Chester Thomason, a renowned organist from Oklahoma City, he has performed exhibitions on the B3 organ at the UCO Jazz Lab and is considered one of the best in execution. Although the string bass and trombone were his specialties during the 60s and 70s, the piano has become his most played instrument. And if any of you have heard him play, you know how true that is. I have been blown away every single time I've heard this man play. And prior to the pandemic, Earl was a pianist and vocalist at Hefner Grill in Oklahoma City. UCO music students and other musicians routinely vie for an opportunity to sit in with Earl Day to experience jazz and present improvisation at its finest. He has been there, done that, and he's done it for Oklahoma City. And now we want to appreciate everything that he has given us over the years. Thank you very much, Earl Day. We appreciate you so, so very much. recognize those who have, you know, held down the traditions of jazz, jazz music, uh, folks that actually were down in deep news. For those who don't know, Oklahoma City used to be on the Chitlin circuit for folks like Duke Ellington and Ella Fitzgerald that used to come down to, to deep news. And so that's a legacy that we have. We have some awesome jazz. Oklahoma has an awesome jazz legacy. And part of the reason that we're doing Oklahoma Jazz in Bloom is to keep that legacy alive. So. If you were here at all during the day, there are all kinds of student groups here from 
oh you, you know, the young folks who wanna go ahead and, and raise up in the right way with some jazz music. Because let me tell you what, if you can get up here and do what these folks do with improv and everything that they're able to do with jazz, you can do anything. So it's a genre to be treasured. It is literally America's only original music art form. So it was created here, so we should embrace it here. And that's part of why we're doing Oklahoma Jazz and Boom. We thank you guys for supporting this inaugural event. Y'all, this is our first year. This event was started with a zero budget. Okay? So what you can do is go on to okjazzandbloom.com and you're able to make an electronic donation there because we're already thinking about what we want to do next year. So hit that website, donate y'all, so we can keep this music alive for the generations to come. All right, y'all, I'm gonna get up here and do this thing and I'm gonna get out of y'all's way. So this is a Nina Simone, Simone tune. I think Simone too. And I want to do this one because uh, I was in Adam's master class and I didn't know she was one of his musical mentors and idols. So I'm going to do this one that he and I used to do together. And it's a tune called Do I Move You? And if you heard Adam speak, uh, he talks about how everything that Nina Simone did had a blues to it, but then she could take it other places because she was just brilliant like that. Do I move you? Are you willing? Do I sue you? Is it thrilling? Do I groove you? the truth now.
musicians here and I know a lot of them but I don't uh, pretend to know everyone so if you'd like to come sit in for the jam session uh, if you could make contact with Shonda we have a list going uh, this is a jam session which means you can come up join the tune we'll all agree on what tune we're gonna play before we play it and we just want to make sure nobody's doing anything crazy like playing your horn from the audience while we're on stage playing. I, I, I say that because it's happened and we don't ever want it to happen again. It's wildly disrespectful. And um, also we want to make sure that when we're up here, we're not um, taking up too much of anybody's time. So we're going to keep our solos brief. We're going to make sure we get a good rotation of, of cats playing. So if you'd like to play, come holler at Shonda. We're going to have us a good time. Thank you.
Mr. Taylor, Vanguard recipient. How's everybody doing? You still out there? Okay, we're gonna do something just a little different, right? Uh, I've been singing up front a little bit, but I've been playing drums and singing most of my life, so I'm going to try to do this and uh, have, uh, give me that first part. <laughs> And the living is easy. Fish are chirping. And the cotton is high. Your dad is rich. And your mama's good looking. So hush. Little baby, don't you cry. One of these mornings, they're going to find things. We're going to spread those wings straight to the sky. Until that morning, no one's gonna harm you. Cause mama and daddy standing by. Time and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. Your dad is rich, so the grip, and your mama's good looking. But hush, little baby, don't you cry. One of these mornings, I'm gonna find you. We're gonna spread your wings straight to the sky. On that morning, no 
one's gonna harm you Cause mama and daddy standing by Blow for me, baby
summertime and the living in the day. Fish are jumping and the coffee is high. Your dad is rich and your mama's good looking. Thank <laughs> you. 
That was an old tune called The Days of Wine and Roses. I'm not sure who else is on the list. Shonda? I don't know who else is on the list. <laughs> Katrina. Sorry to interrupt. I'm a Katrina for the party. Well, we're going to keep on rolling. There's somebody here who would like to join us on stage making merry with music. Talk to Sean.
Hey, hey. Here's Sean DeGram who's checking out this incredible sectional that we've got over here. It says, I do believe it's a raffle. She's checking on that.
this out because people keep asking for it. I'm not the one that's trifling.
about twice a year, that's right. But I think I feel it bothered, so I'm going back there tonight.
All right, y'all, this is gonna be our closeout song. And I just wanna personally thank each and every one of you for coming out and supporting the inaugural year of Oklahoma Jazz in Bloom. Did y'all enjoy yourselves today? Yeah. Well, we wanna make this an annual event. I wanna thank, um, yo, this would not have happened. Where's Diana? This would not have happened at all. Diana Ogle came out one night to one of our first Mondays, live jazz and blues jams. And she came up to me afterwards and she was like, oh my God, why are you, you know, we gotta do a festival here. And it pretty much just evolved from that. And she has been just absolutely phenomenal. You know how some people tell you what they're gonna do? Well, let me tell you, she wanted the people to tell you that she's gonna do something and then she does the doing. So yeah. Right, right, right. We want to thank all our wonderful volunteers, Diana's staff that has come out, all the great musicians that have come out today, and especially you all for coming out and supporting it. We want to make this an annual event, and so we think we've made a good enough showing this year that we'll be able to do that. But one way that you can help us do that is go on to okjazzandbloom.com and hit that donate button. Because, yeah, we did this with starting with a zero budget, Diana pulled this off. So. Uh, just imagine next year we had a little, little slush fun to get things started. So I want to um, give Adam the last word here. I want to thank Nick coming down, Nick Mancini, Clark Gibson, yeah. all these folks. Mike Fields, I think he's gone. Um, but I want to give Adam the last word here because I told Diana when we had our first meeting, we can't do this without Adam Ledbetter, so I want to let him have the last word. Thank you, thank you. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Before we play this last tune, uh, I want to once again shout out Ice Event Center for giving a home to jazz music in Oklahoma City. I feel like this is the last place in this city where we can hear our music on our terms. And I think that's a very important thing and a very important distinction. Oklahoma City is a very historically significant place for the development of this music. A lot of our greatest pioneers came right from here. Um, of course, we all know Charlie Christian, who was born in Texas, but raised in Oklahoma City. And he's the man we have to thank for the electric guitar. He was the first person to master the electric guitar, and how ubiquitous is that now? But also, uh, Don Bias, one of the pioneering founders of Bebop, from right here in Oklahoma City. Don Cherry, one of the founding pioneers of free jazz, is from right here in Oklahoma City. And then if we talk about the state in general, there's just so many legends. So there is a deep legacy here. And a lot of the people I mentioned played this very room. We know ownership has changed hands, but this is hallowed ground. And so I just wanna charge everybody who's here tonight to continue to do the work to preserve this music. Not just to come and be entertained, but because it's such an important piece of the fabric of who we are as a people and how we've survived. I look at uh, Justice Jackson, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, and I see that as a really significant moment. And as these moments continue to happen, it's important to remember how we got here. And this music has very literally been our survival. And so for it to survive, we have to continue to invest in it. We have to continue to take it seriously. We have to continue to support it. And not just to support it, but be a part of it. Don't just come and be a spectator, be an active member in this music. Like I said, everybody who enters this space becomes a part of the music because, not to get metaphysical, but it's literally vibrations traveling through us. And that's a very heavy, very uh, wonderful thing indeed. So we're gonna do one more tune, but I wanna thank you guys for bringing me out for this. Um, I would have just been playing some regular gigs in California, so this is way better. So um, thank you again, everybody. Give yourselves a hand. We love you. We're gonna do this last tune. Close it out. Y'all be safe getting home. Thank you.